Hello, welcome to the lecture number 30 of the course Quantum Mechanics and Molecular Spectroscopy. In the previous lecture, we were looking at the rotational transitions and the associated selection rules. Okay. So, we had this energy E rotation or E rotor was given by H B E J into j plus 1 okay and when we had uh, this is without centrifugal distortion and when we had centrifugal distortion e rotation was given by h b e j into j plus 1 minus h d j square into j plus 1 whole square. Okay. So, and we figured out that this is with centrifugal distortion. Now, we figured out that when there is no centrifugal distortion, the rotational lines will be evenly spaced. Okay. So, this is going from j is equal to 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and 3 to 4. This will be 2 h v 4 h v 6 h v 8 h v and the difference is given by 2 h v. So, you will have equally spaced lines 2 h v. And we know that h v is equal to h bar square by 2 mu square. Okay. So, from B is proportional to 1 over R e square. So, one can get the where R e is the F A and B and R e is the equilibrium distance or equilibrium geometry. So, by measuring the rotational spectrum, one can get the bond distance or in general for polyatomic molecule you can get geometrical parameters. Okay. Now, it turns out that the rotational spectroscopy is the only spectroscopic method by which one can measure geometrical parameters or bond lengths in particular. Okay. There is no other spectroscopic technique that will allow this. Okay. Now, what happens when you have the uh, centrifugal distortion? When the centrifugal distortion is there. So, it kind of affects the because of this term it affects the larger j transitions more than the lower j. So, what happens is this lines become more and more packed. Okay. So, the diff the distance or the energy difference between the subsequent lines keeps decreasing. Okay. So, delta E 0 1 delta E 1 2 this is delta E 2 3. So, if we so delta E 0 1 will, will be will be greater than delta E 1 2 will be greater than delta E 2 3. Of course, you know by looking at the pattern one can also figure out the centrifugal distortion and which is generally so d e is approximately equal to 10 power minus 4 times b e. Okay. Now, when we go back to the molecular Hamiltonian, okay, ok. 
okay it had many terms so h was equal to sum over alpha h bar square by 2m alpha del square alpha negative of this minus sum over i h bar square by 2me del square i minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught sigma over alpha sigma over i z alpha e square by r alpha i plus 1 4 pi epsilon naught sigma over i sigma over j greater than i e square by r i j plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught sum over alpha sum over beta greater than alpha z alpha z beta e square by r alpha beta now this term corresponds to where alpha is the index of nuclei and and i is index of electrons okay now first term we know that this is nothing but kinetic energy of nuclei this one is kinetic energy of electrons this is pe of electron and nucleus this is pe of electron and electron and this is nothing but pe of nucleus and nucleus okay now it turns out that this whole hamiltonian is written as h is equal to h nuclear plus h electron okay so this will be nothing but ke of nucleus okay this will correspond to h nucleus and all the rest of the terms kinetic energy of the electron kinetic energy of the uh, sorry kinetic energy of the electron the potential energy between the electrons between the nuclei and the electrons and the nuclei will constitute to be h electron okay so this has so this one will only be this term and this will be rest of the how many one two three four terms okay now one can think of this within the that is within the born oppenheimer approximation so one can think of it so your total hamiltonian h is h nuclear plus h electronic okay now if you solve okay this so one can think of this as h okay is equal to h nuclear plus when you solve this this will give us some energy that is what will as, as i will call it as a u okay or u electronic so this is the energy of the electronic part of the total hamiltonian Now, when can think of the total the Hamiltonian will be nothing but the nuclear Hamiltonian. Nuclear Hamiltonian here is only the kinetic energy of the nuclei, kinetic energy of the nuclei. Now, one of the things that we have to see is that the U electronic has also nucleus in it in two ways. One is the PE of electron and nucleus and the second one is pe of nucleus and nucleus thus okay this u electron or this u electron 
will constitute a potential in which the nuclei will move. Okay. So, this is nothing but potential energy for the nucleus to move or nuclei to move. Okay. So, this is the potential. So, think of it this. So, the, your total H Hamiltonian is like you know kinetic energy operator H plus the potential energy operator which I will call it as V electron or U electron. Okay. So, this is the Ke and this is the Pe. Okay. Now, so the electronic part of the Hamiltonian gives you the potential in which the nuclei will move. Okay. As I told you the kinetic energy part or the uh, H nuclei okay, will be nothing but for a diatomic molecule A B will be nothing but minus H bar square by 2 M A del square A minus H bar square by 2 M B del square B. Okay. So, this we said that we could do in terms of center of mass separation when you do center of mass center of mass transformation what you will get is minus h power square by 2 mass of mass total mass del square center of mass minus h bar square by 2 mu del square internal okay where capital m is given by ma plus mb and mu is given by ma mb divided by ma plus mb so this is nothing but total mass this is nothing but reduced mass Now, this is motion of center of mass which is nothing but the motion of entire molecule. Now, think of it like this, okay, if there is a hydrogen atom and hydrogen atom has internal structure of several orbitals like 1s, 2s, 2. But those are independent of whether hydrogen atom is going to be moving or is it stationary. So, this particular quantity will not affect, will not govern the internal structure of the molecule. And basically is a uh, free particle Hamiltonian. Okay. Now, what we are left with only this. So, what I have is H internal is equal to minus H bar square by 2 mu del square internal. And this is exactly what we had when we had the rotational motion. However, when we are considering the vibrational motion, this will also be added up with U electron. Okay? Because for nuclei to vibrate, you know, a potential energy for them should be provided by the electrons. Okay? So, the electrons provide the potential energy, electrons in the sense very loosely, the electronic energy which will also consist of the electron nuclear repulsion, uh, electron nuclear attraction and the nuclear nuclear repulsion. Okay? So, this is your H internal. So, we have the Hamiltonian. So, for a vibrational problem, for Your Hamiltonian H is nothing but 
minus h power square by 2 mu del square internal plus let us call it v, v electronic. And how do you get V electronic? V electronic is nothing but H electronic psi electronic will give you V electronic psi electronic. So, this V is here. So, that is the potential. So, there is the this is the kinetic energy operator. And this is the potential energy. Okay. So, we have to somehow solve this Hamiltonian. So, h is equal to minus h bar square by 2 mu del square internal plus v electronic. So, this is the uh, Hamiltonian. So, the corresponding Schrodinger equation would be that is what we need to solve. Okay. Now, if I were to plot, okay. the at the function of r the v electronic okay so that will come out to be something like this okay so we all know so this is nothing but your re or equilibrium geometry and in the rigid rotor case we looked at this re as the fixed distance between a and b but that's not the case because the molecule a b will move in this potential okay or vibrate in this potential so what we have is the curve something looks like this okay so we have a potential energy curve that looks like this okay so this is my potential energy okay and this is my distance and this distance is r e okay now when you have that one can approximate this okay as a harmonic potential in that case the harmonic potential will look something like that okay at the bottom of the well okay one can approximate the real potential or the potential in a molecule of a and b as a harmonic potential so this is your real potential this is the okay now how do i get to this harmonic potential imagine there is a potential energy v okay and at the bottom of the well okay around re i want to expand it as a taylor series so my v okay is now given as some value v not okay plus d by dr of v in evaluated re r plus one half of t square v by dr square evaluated re r square plus one over three factorial d square v by negative sign here three factorial cube by d r cube at r e r cube plus etc so one can write an expansion okay now what is a v0 v0 is this bottom of the potential so if you have potential this is v0 okay now there's two things that we can think we can uh, energy is always measured relatively so i can always measure energy can be measured
relative to V naught. So, if I measure energy related to V naught, then my V this term kind of ignored can be ignored. Okay. Now, what you have is the first. Now, since we are looking at the bottom of the potential, when you know at the bottom of the potential, the first derivative is 0. Okay. So, dV by dr, this is equal to 0. So, at the bottom of the potential, dV by dr is equal to 0. So, I can somehow ignore the two terms. So, what I am left with is my potential V is equal to first term is V0. I told, told you that you know we can measure energies with respect to V0. So, we will ignore it. Second term is uh, second term is dV by dr and since we are at the bottom of the potential, we will ignore that term because the first derivative will go to 0 at the bottom of the potential. So, what I have is half t square v by t r square at r e into r square minus 1 over 3 factorial t square v by t r sorry d cube v by d r cube at r e into r cube and if I want to include the next term it will be 1 over 4 factorial t to the power of 4 v by d r to the power of 4 evaluate r e r to the power of 4 plus etc. Okay. Now, if I ignore higher order terms, okay, beyond 2, beyond the power of 2, then I have, so which means I will ignore these. Then what I have V is equal to half d square V by dr square r e r square. Okay? That is my potential V. Okay. Now, I can call my this as if I equate something called k is equal to d square v by dr square evaluated r e. Okay. So, that is the second derivative of the potential with respect to r okay. and this is the force constant. Okay. So, which means your V is written as half K R square and that is called harmonic potential. Okay. So, therefore, your Hamiltonian H will now become minus H bar square by 2 mu del square internal plus V harmonic. Okay. So, this is the uh, Hamiltonian Hamiltonian for the harmonic oscillator. Okay. So, h will be minus h bar square by 2 mu del square internal plus half k r square. Okay. Now, if I want to, if I have a okay, if I have a diatomic molecule AB and this is my direction. Okay. Now, 
if this is my direction then what I am I doing it I this is my R R E R E and this is the direction R but I can, R is just a simply a choice of variable so I could in fact write it as a X so one can write it as so this is my X E and this direction I can call it as X because variables are dummy one can always interchange variables so what will happen my H will now become minus h bar square by 2 mu ok. This is my direction so when I have uh, del square internal will become d square by dx square where x is equal to x a minus x b ok plus half k x square. So that is the Hamiltonian for which I need the solution and that will give me the solutions of the harmonic oscillator ok. But one must always remember that harmonic oscillator is an approximation ok. The actual molecule is not an harmonic oscillator because for harmonic oscillator potential is something like this harmonic oscillator some potential is something like this and it will so this is your what I will call it as Xe it will never break ok. So, harmonic oscillator potential does not break at all ok it can go up to infinity ok. This is your potential energy however, real molecules break ok. So, when you go to some distance or some energy the A B bond will break ok. So, then this is the real molecule. So, the harmonic oscillator approximation is only trying to represent the bottom of the potential. So, if you go above ok somewhat higher in energy then the harmonic oscillator approximation breaks down rather drastically. So, when you are looking at properties of a molecule at the bottom of the potential or when it is sitting in this well really at the bottom of the well then one can approximate it to be a harmonic oscillator. Even then it is only an approximation and it is not a real thing ok. However, this approximation works reasonably well for most of the most of the molecules and this approximation can be used to measure the uh, uh, evaluate the wave functions and the associated selection rules for vibration spectroscopy which we will continue in the next lecture and we will stop it here for now. Thank you.